guys, it's Shama Maher here, CEO of Scaling Retail. And this week we continue to explore the conversation around sustainability, transparency, and what's going to be happening in terms of climate change for the fashion industry. Now, what's so fascinating is one of the big components when it comes to what happens in the fashion industry isn't just what happens when it comes to textile dyeing and manufacturing and all the issues with sourcing and supply chain, but certainly what happens after a product is done, what happens with the life cycle of the product. With the advent of the real real and other businesses that are starting to enter into the secondhand marketplace, including H&M and others, it comes as no surprise to see Farfetch recently announcing a new pilot program called Second Life, whereby they actually buy back handbags and give you a store credit to use on new merchandise. Now, what's so interesting about this program is it's not new to consumers. Companies like Buffalo Exchange and Crossroads have often been that place where a customer would go there and sell their products and get that voucher. And then companies like The Real Real made that type of platform more standardized and focused it on the luxury market, taking it more digital. Funny enough, now Real Real is opening up and has a huge expansion plan for brick and mortar. So interesting, we're seeing brick and mortar. Now it's elevated into more luxury products and now it's coming back to brick and mortar, which I think is really fascinating. So we all know guys, secondhand market is going to be a big thing for us as we move into the future, both in terms of it being a different kind of business model, but also in terms of the environmental impact. Now research has said, that this particular industry is gonna reach 51 billion by 2023. This is a huge opportunity. Neiman Marcus recently made a, um, a stake and in acquisition into the company Fashion File, and we're gonna to start to see other businesses take a competitive edge in how they look at how they're entering the resale marketplace. Now, what are the pros and cons with this? Well, obviously, one of the big benefits is if you do have a buyback program, you're able to not only pick up on the purchasing habits of your customers and understand what the true product purchasing uh, power is for that customer, but you're also able to then have the secondhand income coming in as you're starting to take these products back in. Now, what are the cons and what are the issues with this? Well, obviously, one of the big issues has to do with authentication, refurbing products, cleaning those products, and getting them photographed with the copy and ready to be sold online, which is why it's more advantageous for a luxury product to be in the resale market than it is for, let's say, lower price point goods. If you think about all of the content production that goes into getting a product online, the margins really have to be there to warrant that brand to take the photos, write the product copy, make sure the product is clean, packaged, and ready to go. So it's no wonder that luxury is really taking off here and why when it comes to lower price point goods, it's been more advantageous for consumers to be selling directly to their consumers, right? So you have someone, let's say like myself, I went ahead and bought this t-shirt, now I wanna go ahead and resell it. Well, the resale value of this product would probably not make it worthy for a higher end company or for another company to be able to resell it. However, when it comes to you know selling it on Poshmark or something to that nature, now all of a sudden I have to spend the time writing the copy, taking the images, etc. So this means guys that the foray into the luxury market is going to be something we're gonna continuously see other brands get into. What does this mean when it comes to those products? What about how many Chanel handbags there can really be in the marketplace, how many Hermes handbags there can really be in the marketplace. I would really love to see how brands are starting to address this from even a buyback acquisition standpoint. Wouldn't it be interesting if we saw a company like Chanel go ahead and start to make agreements with the companies like Farfetch and like others in order to buy back their old merchandise and to start to really tighten the grip on the market for those particular products. I remember back in the day when I was working at Gucci and we would oftentimes see other brands reselling the goods and even used goods out there. And one of the biggest concerns that we always had was what does this do for the brand? How is this diluting the brand? And even though we haven't necessarily seen luxury handbag sales dip down because of now the more saturation to the market of the used products, I think it would actually be quite interesting for us to think about what might the strategies be for these larger houses in order to be able to close the gap and retain more of a market share and have customers have to shop exclusively with them. All right, guys, that's all from us this week. As we continue this foray, clearly sustainability, the consumer life cycle of products and how we start to see secondhand is not just good for the planet, but also an interesting revenue stream is something we'll continue to explore more as we see new companies enter into this market. All from me, guys. Talk to you soon. Have a great week. Bye.